Okay. <laughs> Red little blue. <laughs> we just drove by because both kids aren't feeling well, so we went to go get some Advil's and Tylenol since we were out and our cottage door has blown open in this storm. Again, this door does not want to stay closed. I thought we boarded it, but clearly we didn't. I'm gonna try and get there. Look at how much snow. <laughs> There's so much it's snow. Oh no. Well, you've asked to see the little blue. This is her. It's still pretty. Oh. Hopefully there's no animal inside. Okay, lots to be done in Little Blue. We can fix her, make her beautiful. I'm not gonna give up hope, but this door's gotta stay shut. All right. Bye, Little Blue. Okay, so many updates today. We didn't even plan on stopping at Little Blue today, but I guess that that worked out fine because we've had so many comments of people asking us about what happened to your other property? What happened to your cottage? When are you starting? What have you done without us seeing? We haven't done anything as you can just see. When we bought the cottage, the original plan was that we wouldn't work on the cottage until we had more of our house completed or till our house was basically completed. And that was always the plan. The plan was not that we would use the budget that we had to renovate our own house for the cottage. And there's a couple different things like it would be great to get that up and going and have income coming in from that cottage right now. But the budget that we had to renovate, we've been using for our own home, which has to be a nice place to have our boys grow up and be raised in. And I don't wanna sacrifice what we're doing in our own home into the cottage quite yet. So we're gonna get there eventually, but we have one really important project that we need to do, but we will eventually get to the cottage, but we wanna be able to build our barn first. Our barn is our number one priority to make sure that our horses have a nice spot. And so we are just at our final stage of getting the permit for the barn. We have all the paperwork submitted to consolidate our property. We'll talk about all that on an entire video and explain to you why the delay has happened with the barn and everything that's kind of happened with that along the, the basically the last eight to 10 months, maybe even a little bit longer. Um, but we're gonna do the barn first. And once the barn is built, this spring, like end of spring, early summer, there is so much water on the ground, um, then we will start getting into the cottage. So I know you guys are waiting patiently to see that, but we just really have to budget and put things where it needs to go in priority first. But as you can see, we knew when we bought the cottage, it was going to need like new roof, you know, walls, take all the drywall down. So the mold and things you see in there right now, which we didn't even know was there, it's just obviously been a very stormy winter and lots of leaking happening in that roof. All of that needed to come down anyways. Needs new flooring, needs new subfloor, needs new roof, needs new shingles, needs new insulation, needs new wire, there is no wiring, needs absolutely everything. It's just basically a shell of a building. So although that looks pretty alarming to go in and see that the cottage looks like that, 
we anticipated that that was all gonna have to come out anyway. So that's okay. That door does keep going open though, so that's kind of annoying. So yesterday we went to go do something that was kind of sad for us because we've had so many amazing adventures. But yesterday, Ruby went to her afterlife. Okay, so our last day with Ruby, she's getting on a flatbed. We've sold her so someone can use her for parts since there's too much to be fixed on her and her frame is gone. So our last adventure was our last adventure, but she did us so good over the years. Thanks, Ruby, we'll miss ya. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we ended up taking Ruby to Toyota and Toyota did a complete overhaul list on what Ruby was going to need to drive her safely, get her back driving like a really good truck. And she is a 2008 and when we got the list back, just like we suspected, there's no reason on this planet that we should put that much money into fixing that truck. So funny how you can get so emotionally attached to a vehicle. <laughs> like, it just it seems so funny to be like, that we're so sad that a truck is not part of our family anymore because we have gone on so many adventures with that truck. We've gone camping and off-roading in Algonquin. We've gone all the way to the West Coast. It's gone to the East Coast. It's gone all over different adventures all across Canada and just stuff we've done with the boys and their nan and papa and it's just been a truck that's just taken us to so many different places. 500,000 kilometers. 500,000 kilometers. Just with us. Just with us. So, yeah. you know, we've done a lot with that truck and I mean, she had a name. We gave her a little pat on the hood, on the dash every time she did a good job and got us back home. Like we tr truly did love the truck, but we basically had to sell her just for a small amount of money for parts, which was even harder to do when we know how much money we've put into her in the last year to take such a hit but you just have to do things as you can and when your family can budget things out and throughout this year the cheaper option was for us to put money into her rather than getting into a new vehicle that being said we're driving in our new truck now as you know we switched out the blue truck and we're able to get an upgrade we did put a little bit extra money with it she's driving like a brand new truck we still haven't given her a name we're so excited about her and everything kind of happens like i said for a reason and Clearly we were meant to have a much better truck. And I kind of wanted a white pickup truck anyway, so everything is kind of working out the way that it's supposed to. Everything is melting. There's, it's plus nine degrees, everything's melting. And tonight around, what did it say? Seven o'clock, eight o'clock? Yeah. Tonight, we're gonna get a flash freeze. Dropping down to, I think, minus double digits. Minus 10? Yeah, minus 10 to minus 17. With oh the wind my chill. gosh. Well, here I am again in the bathroom working on the bathroom renovation, which at this point just seems like a bathtub renovation more than a bathroom renovation. Oh, YouTube family. Okay, well, the last couple of days you've seen that I was working on spending hours and hours and hours sanding down the original clawfoot tub here in the bathroom. And you saw that once it got to the point of sanding it down as much as I possibly could, that I used a tub and tile kit and the tub and tile prep kit to be able to do the tub. And I got on the first coat, I was thinking, okay, this is very thin and doesn't really seem like the coverage that I thought that an epoxy paint would look like. This is my first time using epoxy, so I was thinking, well, what do I know? I watched a ton of videos online of other people doing it, and they seemed to say that they also had thin application, so I continued on. I waited the three hours at least minimum in between each of the dry times, making sure every time I did a coat that I had zero dripping at all. I even had Philip look in between each section and each dry time, uh, you know, start of that first 15 minutes of dry time to make sure that I didn't have any dripping that I didn't notice because I wanted this to look completely smooth, especially after all the work that I put into the tub. So I wanna show you, it's now been three days since I did the tub. And although it has cured so much more white and more covered than I thought that it was going to, I am extremely, can't even say that word, stress out enough, extremely disappointed in my tub. And I feel like I've done so much work and I'm probably going to start over the tub, not even probably. I'm going to be starting over my tub and I'm gonna show you why. So I would love to think that I am being completely ridiculous with this and just being a perfectionist, but the truth is I'm truly not. I'm hoping that you can see on camera, but do you see the texture of my tub? Look at 
what that kit did to my tub. It looks like waterfall. All of the material, even though I put it on in, it like insanely thin, I could not have put it on any thinner than I did. It has left all of this dripping. And this dripping didn't happen when it was wet and it didn't happen when it was tacky to the touch because we were meticulously watching it and didn't see any dripping at all. It only started dripping when it was past the point of being able to adjust the paint. So it started happening about two hours to two and a half hours after we would put on a coat of paint and then it would just immediately harden. And then there was nothing I could do about it because you can't then brush a paintbrush over it and it would just pull it up and make it really textured. So look at the texture of the tub. It is absolutely awful. So that's one side. There's the front part, not to mention, oh, you can really see it in the light on this side more. It is absolutely horrendous and on very uneven coverage, even though I put very covered coats on each level, I made sure, you know, I made sure, especially with how much time it took me to sand it. I'm gonna show you the other side. Oh, this side is even worse. You can really see it better in the lighting on this side. Look at my tub, YouTube family. So at this point, to even show you the bottom of the tub it it's just as bad just so bumpy so uneven nothing but drips I almost feel like this was a spoiled box this product was way too expensive for this product to look like this and I was so careful with such thin coats tried to apply it as evenly as possible I just don't know what happened. Only thing I can think of is that it wasn't a good quality box, meaning maybe the box was really, really old and settled. I did think when I poured part B into part A, that it didn't look like there was that much part A in the container. So maybe some of it had evaporated or did harden up in the container. I really don't know what else, what other excuse to make for such a bad product, but obviously don't recommend using that kit that I did. And so now I'm at the point where I have to make a decision. Uh, although we're not going to use this tub all the time, because we do have a stand-up shower. None of us are really like bathers every night. We like to have showers instead. But I still want this tub to look amazing. And this is something that I really wanted to keep in the house. And so it's really frustrating that it didn't work out the way that I'd hoped. So my only option at this point is to re-sand the tub and use a different product. And so I've done tons of research. I went through all the comments from what you guys had left us in a previous video about the tub and many of our YouTube family members suggested that I use a marine paint. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I discussed it with the hardware store locally. I did tons of research online and went through all the comments from you guys. And it seems like a lot of people do use marine paint to do this. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to re-sand this down, even though it's going to take me as many hours, I'm sure maybe even more now, that it has a fresh epoxy on it. And then I'm going to use a marine paint, a white marine paint, and I'm going to paint the entire tub inside and the sides and then continue to do my gold feet. Painting the gold feet at the end will be like putting the, <laughs> the star on the top. At the very end, it will be exciting for me to do that. And so I'm going to you know, give myself that reward at the end of redoing this that I get to put the feet on and make them gold and then move this tub where it's going to be in the bathroom. Because unfortunately, this is just gonna look really terrible in the bathroom if I don't make it right. And I want this tub to be so beautiful. So I'm going to load up my palm sander, put my mask on, open the window, and spend today's rainstorm sanding down this tub as much as I possibly can. And I'm wondering if I will get to the point of adding the marine paint on today or not. I'm not really sure. Um, we are in an insane freezing rainstorm that's going to flash freeze tonight. Both kids aren't feeling well. You know, it's just been one of those days, but I'm determined to at least get this completely sanded today as many hours as it's going to take me. So fingers crossed, I can get this epoxy off easier than I think I'm gonna be able to. So before I started doing the tub, I thought that it would be rewarding for me at least to work on something that I think will be really fun. Just kind of redirect myself a little bit. But this is the faucet that goes on this portion here of the tub. And I'm going to keep this original one. The hose that was on here was the only part that was broken. And then the handle for that went along in this little spot right here. Super cute faucet. 
I absolutely love the white turn knob. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape off the handles and I'm going to paint the actual faucet. But I wanna do a primer on it first and then I'm gonna make it gold. So this is what it looks like beforehand. I'm gonna do some prep work. I've already washed this whole thing with TSP towel dried it like crazy to make sure there was zero water bumps on it at all. I'm gonna see if I can get these little circles out and then I bet you I can use a screwdriver to actually take those little dials off. But I love how they see hot and cold. I think that's super cute and original to the house so why not keep it? And I'm gonna do that first. So what I did was I meticulously taped off those white handles that I liked. I was not able to get that second little circle out without damaging it so I just taped it off. I've got the other one set aside and I'm going to use some Bullseye 123 primer first. Again, I've TSP'd this, made sure it was totally dry. I did absolutely every prep that I possibly could. And I'm just gonna do it with the windows open in this box here in the bathroom. I already have enough bad fumes going on in this room right now anyways. So here we go. Let's make this a beautiful antique gold faucet. Stage one. So I'm gonna move this into the hallway. That way I have some room to work with more because this is gonna take such a long time to kind of dry for my first coat. I'm gonna mask up and start trying to sand this bathtub and see how hard it's going to be to get this enamel off. Okay, this is left. I already rolled it up. Bottom center, I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. Okay, so part of the good news is, is that you can see the blue coming in the top, which means that I was able to pretty quickly be able to get some of that paint off. You can see some of these yellowy spots where, where there was raised things that were there from the paint that I was able to then level out to the tub height. So I think that's a good sign. I'm starting to be able to smooth it out and that was just with a few quick minutes. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out this for several hours and see how smooth I can get this tub. My problem areas are going to be right here where the sander doesn't want to go in a rounded kind of situation. And so I think what I'll have to do is use one of those sponge sanding blocks and do those areas by hand. So luckily those aren't my worst areas where it curves, but this back area here is pretty bad. So I'm hoping that my sander will allow me to get the most of that area covered with the palm sander because look at that. So at this point, I think I'm just happy that I think this paint's gonna come off and I'll be able to backtrack to the very beginning and then redo my tub and then get the outcome that I'm hoping for. So I'm gonna keep working at this now. As usual, I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold. It's my favorite to get that antique brass look. This is a satin finish and we're going to make our antique gold hardware now. This faucet is going to change dramatically with this. Let's do a few test sprays on the these bubbles. I ended up doing two coats of the primer, really nice, even coats as best as I could. And I think in the long run that's going to help with the durability. And then I'm also going to satin clear coat it in the end. Oh, it's looking so gold right now. So is this faucet absolutely perfect? No, it's old and it is a little bit textured, but I'm totally okay with that. I looked online to see how much new faucets were gonna be, and it was just gonna be something way out of budget or something that I don't really wanna spend a whole ton of money on. So this is my way of being able to create a new look, and since we're not gonna use this that often, I'm not overly concerned about it. I definitely think, because I know I practiced with other faucets in the past with black paint and primer, that it lasted for a really, really long time. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be the same, but how pretty, it's gonna look great in the end. Whew. 
Okay, so you might think that I've gone mad from the fumes or something, but I actually think that that epoxy kit helped me. <laughs> Remember all those really like deep dips from what I couldn't get off from the original person that restored this tub? Yeah, well, now that I'm sanding this really, really smooth, this is so smooth. Once I can sand off the drips, all of those divots that were from the other paint that wasn't there that were really indented are now completely level with what I'm sanding now. It filled in all of those gaps. So now that I'm being able to sand, for example, this area here, this is so smooth and I'm not even done yet. I don't have any of those indents. I am really getting kind of scratchy up here because I'm not finished this area yet, but I'm just trying to see like how hard is it gonna be to get all these drips off. It's working really well. So maybe this was a blessing in disguise. Maybe this ultimately helped me to make the end result of this that much better. I mean, at this point, what else can I think, right? It's gotta be a blessing in here somewhere. The blessing is, is that I think honestly that this helped me, that epoxy filled all of those deep gaps and now I'm going to have a really level, you know, really nice finish in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish sanding this down. Now I'm motivated. I'm like, okay, this has fixed a problem. This needed to happen. This is gonna 10 steps back to go way forward in the end is gonna be totally worth it. So I think this is gonna be a gorgeous job, YouTube family. I got this, I got this. So I just noticed that in this lighting, my gold doesn't really look that different, just a little bit. And so I'm kind of happy with that. Pretty good match considering I ordered this off Amazon. So I'm gonna put that aside, but time to be finished with our faucet and we can flip this over. And we're going to, oh, I got a little bit of white cardboard stuck to the front here, get that off. Do that in a second. And I'm gonna take all this tape off and then we'll be able to see what it looks like. So here is what my faucet turned out like. I think it looks so good. I've done all of the other plumbing parts. I will have some other parts to do behind the bathtub when we get to that point and putting it down through the floor. And then I have the handheld. I love how the handheld has the white and then we have the white knobs. It just really like ties it in together, but I'm going to leave this overnight. And then tomorrow I'll be able to use this clear mat. I wanna make sure I do a couple of coats, probably three or four coats of this matte clear just to give it some extra protection. But I was dying to see what it was gonna look like. So I took off the tape, but that's okay. And I think it looks so good. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm guessing we're gonna have power for just a couple more hours because we do have this flash freeze coming and we always lose power when this happens. And so I think I'm gonna work for the next couple of hours doing as much sanding on the tub as I possibly can so that come tomorrow morning, I'm ready to put the paint on. I'm going to re-prep it the same way I did last time with the TSP, make sure there's no debris at all. And then I'm going to roll, rather than using a paintbrush, I'm going to roll the marine paint on and do a couple of coats. I think because it's oil paint, it's gonna take some time in between to dry. So I might get one coat on tomorrow, I'm not sure. And then I'll probably have to wait and see how long it's going to take to dry. I've actually never painted with oil paint before, believe it or not. And so it's another thing for me to try that I haven't done. Um, but there's plenty more things to do here in the bathroom that I can do during the kind of drying process of the paint there. And so I think ultimately this is going to work out great. I think honestly it was a blessing that the epoxy paint did work because it seemed to have repaired some of the areas of my tub that I'm now going to be able to paint over smoothly with this new paint. So everything happens for a reason. Maybe that was just supposed to be one of the stages of this project and we're gonna get to the final result we're hoping for in the end no matter what. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I just wanna always show you whether things work or don't work so you kind of know the process that goes into doing all these projects and renovating an old house like this. There's always setbacks and I guess it's just how you handle those as they come. I was super frustrated today and a little bit discouraged, but I'm never gonna let those moments hold me back from getting the outcome that I want to make this beautiful house that we essentially bought abandoned to turn it into an amazing home for us. So I love you, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on tomorrow's episode.